Hello, my name is Mark Aragajanian, and you are listening to Golbezan Podcast. Dai, the first half is good. Now the first half is good. Oh my god, a run. Okay, okay, it's a run. It's a run. So we go so we get so we're in group B, right? Yes. We're in B? We're in B? Oh my god! Oh my god! What has just happened? What? Iran is in Group B with England and USA, guys. This is literally the second best that we could have gotten in terms of pod two. This is the best draw Yo. ever. We can't go out. That game no, is not for no. We can't go out. Huge American put around. Drop two sanctions before the game. It's gonna be a mad. Do you know how mad that would be? Yeah. We we got to stay inside. We Bro, go I'm in the stadium. I've got tickets. This- As an Iranian in America that went to school at, at Oxford, this is an incredible thing for me. I, I can't. I can't wrap my mind around it. Imagine we get Scotland. <laughs> oh yes. my god. No. Yes. No way. We're going to get Scotland. Please. Obviously, for selfish reasons, I didn't want to be grouped with England. Seeing that I live here, uh, I don't want to have yeah. more than one team to cheer for. But from an mm. exposure point of view, uh, this is Massive. actually pretty great for Iran, man. Like, uh, English speaking uh, media is the one that dominates the world. And I'm already watching uh, the commentary on the US TV, and they're doing the same exact thing they did in 98, where they're just mm. glossing over Iran. They have no idea. Like the individual talent that's on this team, they have no idea, and they're doing the same thing they did in '98, Ooh. thinking it was going to be a cakewalk, and they just they just don't know what's coming. Alexi Wallace has been talking shit for 20 years. I cannot wait to shut him up. So <laughs> find the rest. Yeah, the I think it's going to be the winners of the group are going to be England and Iran. England and Iran. Hello, welcome back to Gobazan Podcast. My name is Arya Laverdi. I'm really pleased to be joined by my good friend Sina Saimian. How you doing, my friend? Hi, Arya. It's great to be on uh, to discuss the topics. And we've got a special guest uh, on this episode as well, don't we? Yes, of course. We have a special guest today, Mr. Mark Karagajanian, former Iran assistant coach under Carlos Kairos, two previous World Cups in 2014 and 2018. Uh, very good to have you back on the podcast again. How are hello. You good? First of all, I want to say uh, hello to ones listening our voice. And, uh, I'm happy to make uh, this interview with you guys. Glad to have you back on the podcast. I appreciate your time. Uh, in today's episode, uh, we're going to briefly analyze Iran versus Lebanon, which ended 2 0 to Team Mali. Goals coming from Sadar Osmoun. <laughs> And Jahan Bakhsh, uh, both assisted by Hossein Kanoni. ارسال بلند دیگه فرصت برای ایران چه فضای ایجاد شده اونجا پشت مدافعین لبنان جهان بخش جهان بخش و تو میگه توی دروازه قرار میگیره دروازه رو به زیبایی باز کرد علیرضا جهان بخش و حساب کار دو بر صفر میکنه subsequently uh, the win meant that Iran won group A with 25 points as South Korea lost their game to UAE after that we'll discuss uh, Iran's group uh, in the 2022 World Cup with England, USA, and one of Scotland, Wales, and Ukraine. Okay, first up, we're going to speak about the the match between Iran and Lebanon. Um, uh, Mr. Arjun, I want to come to you first. Um, in terms of this match, uh, what is the biggest takeaways from this game? Uh, how important was Iran uh, for Iran to win this game? 
I think, as you know, the important uh, point was the three points because uh, Iran, with these three points, top of the group, qualified the World Cup. That was very important. But about the game, I think it was uh, an easy game for Iran, like uh, like friendly preparation game for Iran. But the important thing was three points for because of uh, Iran stay in the top of the group that's it yeah i mean fairly simple victory i think end of the day iran you know they lost their last game against south korea they had to to get a win if they wanted to finish first in the group and they have done that they have finished first i think ultimately that was the objective uh, for the qualification was for iran to finish top of the the group and they did it so i think ultimately there's not really much else to say about it sina have you got anything to add i know you didn't watch the entire game but you know, this this win. You know, is it is it is it just as simple as that? You know, two a few points on the board and we move on. Exactly that. Uh, look, as you said, you know, I, I didn't watch the full game, so I don't want to talk about the um, the exact kind of uh, incidents in in the game. But I think overall, before the game, when we were heading into it, considering the uh, the loss that we had against South Korea, it was just important to get the three points. Uh, as Marco said, and and I completely agree. Um, I think at that stage, the three points was was all that mattered, and ultimately it meant that we finished top of the group. Um, it was again a solid performance, clean sheet, two goals. Um, at that stage, you you can't really ask uh, for anything more. Yeah, absolutely. But there was a little bit of a you know a, a damper on the performance, even though we won the game. Uh, outside the stadium, it wasn't as as bright. Uh, for for the supporters, the the female supporters trying to get into the stadium, um, it was said that they had got tickets. Uh, whether they were told that there were being tickets sold for women, um, was true or false, I don't know. But ultimately, uh, that wasn't the case, and uh, there was um you know uh pepper pepper sprayed, uh you know, and there was a lot of um just a lot of bad things going on and things that we don't want to see things that don't make, um, you know, Iranian football look good to the outside world as well. Uh, uh, Marco, what, what is your, your thoughts on that? So, as you said, uh, I think in the world, this is the normal thing. Uh, women go to the stadium. And as you know, FIFA rules, this is FIFA rules and FIFA gave Iran warning many times about uh, this problem and uh, I think was last game women went to the stadium was uh, Iran national game huh? I, I, I don't yeah, remember I think it was in January if I'm not mistaken yeah so that should be rule you know even in the league game they supposed to allow to women go to the stadium, but I for, unfortunately, I don't know what's happened there. When just can I just I can say the I am so sorry about that happened for women's, you know, and I hope never happen again. This problem for women's. Yeah, I mean, look, it's we it, it's almost like a, it's almost never ending, you know, this situation, and it's something that we really wanna. Uh, we want to get past FIFA. Have really tried. Um, you know, there was a su- suggestion of uh, is Iran going to get banned from the competition? You know, in November, that's not going to happen. But you know, these discussions keep coming up every every game. There's always issues with this. You know, h- how do we solve it? Look, it, I mean, it's it's not brand new. Unfortunately, it happens. It's been happening for for longer than it should have, um, and at this stage, after all the conversation, all the um, all the kind of the warnings, as as Markar said, from FIFA and everything else that's been involved, we were hoping that this would be resolved by now. But yet here we are again. It's 2022, and we're still talking about this topic. And you know, using pepper spray on on your own people when it comes to football, uh, you know, it's 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 embarrassing and it's it's shameful. Uh, more than anything look we we all know that this is a, a political matter more than anything but equally from a from a footballing side fifa is also responsible to to resolve this and, and although yes warnings have been given and are given ultimately it's fifa's responsibility to to take action because the line has to be drawn somewhere 
you know, even when you give warnings, it's ultimately to say that, you know, after, for example, three or four warnings, this will be the consequence. That consequence hasn't happened. Uh, and no one knows what the consequence is. Is it that Iran would be banned from the World Cup, for example, as you said, the discussions have been, or or would it be uh, something else? And, um, and and it's disappointing. And and I and I use a comparison to say, if, for example, one, one of the things that FIFA comes really hard uh, down on is um, the involvement of governments within the football federations. Yeah. So if the Iranian government was going to get involved in the federation, um, they would suspend all footballing activities like they did with Kuwait a few years back, like they have done with Pakistan. Uh, and I think it's, the, the ban has just about ended recently. Yeah. Um, if they apply the same rules and same logic to this, which they should, then a, a suspension would be something that we are looking at. And look, I'm, I'm, I'm excited to go to Qatar. I'm, I'm hoping to go to Qatar to watch the World Cup, as are millions of fans. But this is um, a topic that goes beyond the football match. And I think football can be used as a tool to bring that equality. Uh, but as I said, um, at this moment in time, I think FIFA is not doing enough either. Everything's got to go hand in hand to make this happen. And I think FIFA needs to hold up its part of the uh, bargain as well. Yeah, uh, absolutely. OK, so, I mean, the, the big discussion today is, of course, the uh, Group B for Iran will be with uh, England, USA, uh, Scotland, Wales or Ukraine will be one of those teams and that will be decided sometime in the summer. Um, However, I want to ask uh, Mark, our, you know, when you saw the group getting drawn and, uh, you know, we saw these teams, England, USA, teams that are, you know, politically very uh, close to Iran, but also uh, and from a footballing standpoint, we never played England before. We played USA in the 1998 World Cup. We played Scotland in the 1978 World Cup. You know, how, how good is this group for Iran? It's a good group for Iran because it could be a more difficult group, for example, from A spot, Brazil, Belgium, Argentina, France, you know, or from the uh, second spot, Germany, you know, Uruguay or uh, Croatia, you know. So with my experience, uh, I think it's a good group for Iran. Could be very difficult group. But as you know, for my experience, no any single game in World Cup is easy game, you know. This is very important. Uh, just like compare with other groups, I'm saying it's a better group, it's yeah. a good group, you know. But no any single game in World Cup is easy game. It's my experience, two World Cup experience, you know. Yeah, obviously speaking about the the World Cup experience. Obviously, we, last time we had Portugal, Spain. This this time we have England, USA. You know, and a lot a lot of us believe that against Portugal, Spain. You know, we we performed really well. Yeah, the team was in fantastic shape. Um, how do you think Iran have to prepare for a team like England uh, this time around? First of all, I think. Uh... So we know about England, last World Cup and uh, last Euro, you know, they did good job. So, but uh, usually England in the tournament, I remember they are not uh, stable, you know, they are not balanced team. Uh, so, yeah. we. Uh, but uh, one thing is uh, still we have seven months to first game, you know. It's long time, you know. Many things could be changed in the every team, you know, players, everything, even coaches. So I think it's easy to discuss about uh, how should we play against England or other games. So, you know, in terms of pre preparing for this game, like you know, friendlies. You know, what does Iran need to do from today to to prepare for that match, first game against England? Look, there's. 
Although, yes, you know, we do have England in the group and we were always going to have a really, really difficult team of England's standard in the group anyway. You know, if it wasn't England, it was going to be either Brazil, France, uh, Belgium, Spain. So, And it was always going to be a difficult game. So I think it's not a surprise. And, um, you know, the, the preparation wouldn't necessarily change us in terms of the mentality because they're going to face England. I think what... Uh, what it does or, or what it can potentially impact is the order of the game. So, so playing England the first game, first game can can impact how we go into the second and ultimately into the third and the most important game against the United States. Now, with regards to the preparation itself, within these seven months, we don't just prepare for the England game. We play. We we, we prepare to play all three teams and and I don't think that 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 is going to change as such just because we have England in the group um I think the important uh, issue is 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 the issue of friendlies uh, playing against uh, top opposition and considering that we are going to have two european teams in our group I think it's important to play european countries yeah. as friendlies in these games um I'm I'm generally more um, worried about playing European teams in the World Cup, and I want to ask Marco a quick question here as well. But um, I, I I think that from a tactical point of view, our job is more difficult. Putting aside, as I said, England was always going to be difficult, or, or the team that was going to be uh, the leader in that group is always going to be difficult. Whether it's Brazil, France, England, whatever team that was going to come, but it's pot four being a European team that concerns me a little. And what I wanted to ask Marco was, Marco, you, you were, of course, part of Team Melli in 2014 and in 2018, but the groups that we had were completely different. You know, in 2014 was, um, I wouldn't say it was easier because as I said, there is no easy group, but it was a manageable group, you know, playing Nigeria, who, yes, at the time, African champions, and of course, Bosnia. What I wanted to ask is how did, your preparation and the coaching staff preparing the team how did that change based on the group and and based on the difficulty of the group in each world cup so first of all in 2014 uh, we had uh, less time to preparing the you know camp because that period i remember uh, the uh, A afc games for the clubs uh, across our camp, our South Africa camp, and many players came later, like Sepan and Stelal players, and that was a big uh, problem. So, uh, but uh, that period, if you remember, we have a lot of experienced players in 2014, uh, like Nekunam, Teimurian, Dejage, you know, Gucci, in the uh, defender line, Jalal, say Jalal, Pejman, Sadeghi, you know, that a lot of uh, experienced players, Masood. So, a little bit different. Uh, and one of the point we, 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 we weren't stable like the 2018, three games, you know. If you remember, third game, about the physically, we were going down, you know. So, because of that age of the players, so on preparation. Uh, but in 2018, we have a lot of young players, you know, young blood in the team, and we had better preparation. Uh, even uh, I think was uh, about six weeks before we had 20 days good camp in Besiktas uh, Stadium facility we had that turkey game before that we had the tunisia game we had algeria game uh, was very good game for us special turkey game last game before the world cup we lost 2-1 but for us very important and you if you go and uh, search we changed almost 50 percent of 11 players in the first game Compared with Turkey game, yeah. you know, that was very good for us. So, 
But about uh, now you are talking about England, I think uh, not only England, we should find the similar uh, teams, national teams to play same more and less. For example, England, so Scotland is good game, Wales is good game, but we cannot play right now. But at least we can play like Ireland, you know. So more yeah. and less, uh, more and less, you can a little bit similar. One thing I want to say is that it's, it's interesting you both have mentioned European teams as friendlies, but I do believe the Nations League is still going to go on, right? So I don't know if your all European teams will be available, right? In saying that, y- yes, uh, uh, and I heard just. Uh, today I saw in the news the in the June I think June we have FIFA day so yeah from before many teams they had the schedule so we don't have too much option I saw in the news and the playoff game still they gonna play exactly so, so, it's so I heard just we can play with Asia team or uh, I think South America team, you know, like yeah. Peru, like Peru. So this is the another uh, problem for the Iran national team. Coming on to the U.S. national team, uh, a team that, I, and in my opinion, is, is is still in development. They're still bringing lots of players to Europe to play in good clubs like Barcelona, Dortmund, Chelsea. They've got players playing all over Europe. Um, you know, something actually that the Iran national team want to do, you know, we would love to have the amount of European players that the US have in Europe, but unfortunately that's still growing for us. Do you believe, Sina, that the US national team are a team that are going to be underestimated? Uh, and, and is, it, is that uh, something that Iran need to be really you know, wary of, complacency? I don't think we will be in a position to to underestimate anyone, really, whether it's um, United States or any one of Wales, Scotland or, or Ukraine. Um, ultimately, we will be the underdogs. And uh, like I said, there is no room for complacency as such. I think um, when we talk about having the USA and, and considering to, considering having them as a good draw is because when you look at pot two, the potential teams that we could we could have ended up with, USA was probably the one that we were more open to because it's a more, I would say our chances of, of getting a win is higher. You know, when you compare it to the likes of Germany or Holland or Uruguay, who we could have faced, that, that those games are are much, much more difficult. Whereas playing the United States, may, we, we have a, a better and a, and a bigger chance. That doesn't necessarily make them a weak side because, as you said, you know they have players who play at some of the uh, the best clubs in Europe. Uh, they have a young squad, um, a talented squad. Um, in the qualifiers, yes, they weren't necessarily as, as impressive. Doesn't necessarily mean that that is going to translate into the World Cup either. You know, it's, a lot of things change. As Marco said, you know, in seven months, seven months alone is a, is a long time, let alone comparing... Um, you know, the, the World Cup to, for example, qualifiers that may have happened um, a year ago. So, no, I don't, I don't think we will be complacent. Uh, but I also think how we do in the first two games will ultimately determine how we approach the final game against them. Because if we, I mean, I, I don't want this to happen, of course, but if we lose the first two games and the third game against the United States, just like it was in, in 98 as well, I think, it ends up becoming almost a friendly between the two countries where the result no longer matters from in the context of, of the World Cup is more of yeah. bragging, bragging rights uh, point of view. Uh, Marco, how important is it that both national teams try to separate politics from football? Because ultimately, in 98, they tried to do that, but unfortunately, it wasn't as successful as it wanted to be. Uh, how do you see Iran against USA? Uh, I completely agree with Sina about what he said about USA, you know, as I said before about the spot two, it's more more easier game than we can maybe win this game compared with Germany, Croatia, even Croatia, you know, it's a more easy game. But as you said, they have a lot of players. They are playing in Europe. They are very good players. But uh, we 
yeah, one good point. This can be used for the players about the mentality because we had we had that game in 1998. We beat them, you know. So mentality, we have. This is good advantage for us, and uh, maybe bad advantage for them, you know, about the mentality because yeah. we play only one time and we beat them. So we can use this for mentality, but. As uh, Sina said, uh, this is the third game. Maybe first two games, you can reach everything or nothing. You know, this is very important. How's going the third game? Um, coming back to uh, to England, of course, England game will be the first game, and that's a game where Iran probably will have to defend for 90 minutes let's be honest they're not going to go out there and attack against england it's not going to be the same uh, as playing against uh, scotland for example but do you believe Sina, that the, that having in england as the first game is a dis- disadvantage for us because you know we're going to potentially blow off all our energy i think Look, from an energy point of view, I think we we have to be able to um, play our games diplomatically in a way where when we get to the third game, regardless of who the opponent is, we would have enough energy. I think Marco touched on 2014 and it was very obvious, you know, when we got to the third game against Bosnia, mentally and physically, we were extremely tired. And that's because maybe there weren't as much rotation because the squad may have not been um, the, that much quality in there. And as as he said, you know, the age may have been the age of the players may have been a, a lot higher than it is now. So as we approach the tournament, and this is part of the preparation for the tournament, you plan in a way where the players don't end up you then you don't end up being with eleven you know, exhausted plays for the third game, regardless of whether it's against England, USA, or, or, or you know, Wales or Scotland or, or Ukraine. So in that sense, no, it, it doesn't make a difference. However, what it does make a difference is, is, is the actual approaching games. I, I'm always a believer, especially when you look at Iran in the World Cup, historically, Iran do well when they play a weaker side in the first game. You look at 2014, we play against Nigeria, get a draw, that means we're still in it. You know, we're not fighting for our life in the second game against Argentina. Yes, we end up losing against Argentina, but we still have a chance against Bosnia. You look at 2018, the same thing happens. We beat Morocco, we go into the Portugal and Spain game with something to play for. You compare that to 2006, 2006, arguably, in Angola was the easiest team we have ever played in World Cup history. Right. You know, a team that was there for the first time, not that many great players. And as we've seen subsequently, they've never made the World Cup after that either. But again, we played Mexico and Portugal in the first two games, lose them. And then in the third game, it becomes a friendly, which we end up drawing. Mm. What I'm trying to say is that the, the, the order of the games matter importantly. The game against England, if we can get something from it, then perfect. But if we can't, and it's a very likely scenario that we can't take a point or a win against England, that yeah. second game then means it's um, win or die, essentially. If, if, we, if we end up losing that, we're out. Marco? Um, I agree with... Uh... Sina and I, I want to complete this uh, with this way. Uh, we need uh, at least 20 ready players, you know, for the three games. Cannot go with 11 or 14 players for the, those three games in 12, 12 days, you know, three strong games. So you need 20 good players, ready players, physically, ment- mentality. And uh, the key point, I think, for the World Cup is the preparation, good preparation, and play friendly, good games, you know, to prepare uh, mentality and physically players. And between each game, 
that was the big, big process, you know, we had with Carlos Queiroz, you know, to be ready always for the second game, for third game, same, same rhythm, you know. Uh, yeah. Stable um, until the end. I want to make one point. So this is the, I think the key, key, key point is the preparation and uh, have a good friendly games. That's so very important. One point I want to make is, is, I think it's quite important to bring this up. The game against South Korea, we missed about three, five, four or five of our key players, you know, like Jahan Bach, Taremi, etc. In uh, Qatar, it is very likely that players will will get COVID-19. It's quite likely, especially the fact that it's basically going to be in one city, you know, and, you know, th- there's a, a very high chance of, of that happening. Uh, I think for Iran, it's very important that they are able to have enough depth in their squad uh, to to still compete at a good level because ultimately against South Korea, when we lost our players, you know, it didn't happen. You know, we, we didn't perform well. Uh, Sina, we didn't have you on for that podcast, but, uh, you know, it wasn't a good performance, you know, and against a team that historically we've done really well against is that a, a concern that you know if Iran do lose players, that you know we're not going to have enough on the bench to replace them? Look, I think what I took away from the South Korea game was that when you compare our team or our style or or the preparation to a game, you compare what it is now compared to how it was on the K Rosh and, and Markard and all the other coaching staff that were there at the time. The the main difference is that in preparation, each position has a specific almost or a, that's how it feels like from where we stand. Markard can correct me if I'm wrong. But from where we sit, it looks like every position have have a set instructions that they need to follow a set instructions to follow and a set things not to do. So then it's easier for players to come in and and follow them, essentially. You know, if it's Reza Young, Reza Young can do that. If Reza Young goes out and Ghafuri comes in, for example, um, yeah. those instructions stay the same. So they can And a good example at- of that is when Majid came in for Cheshmi at the World Cup, right? Exactly, exactly. And we saw that on the Kirosh for especially in the last four or five years where players would go missing uh, due to injury or suspension and the other player that would come in would do essentially not even if not to the same quality but would do the basics now you're right at this time it it, it looks like a concern where if two or three starters are unavailable then that's when alarm bells start to go off. And I don't think it should be that way. You know, if, for example, we don't have Sadiq Muharrami, there should be a right back available that can come in and, and do the same job, even if it's not to the same quality, to do the basics. It does not look that way at the moment, and that is a concern. And I think that's what these seven months should be. It should be to set up a a system, you know, pick, for example, 35, 40 players to follow, to work with very closely, and then pick 23 out of out of that 40 that can do the job for you, regardless of who comes in and out. Because going back to what Markar said, and I completely agree with him, it is, it is the wrong approach to go into the World Cup and use only 14 or 15 players within three games. Because when we get to the third game, regardless of what's happened in the first two games, the third game, we are going to be absolutely exhausted. And we're never going to be in a position to get the result that we want. So to avoid that, you create an environment, you create a system where players can come in and fit in and, and do, the jo- do the job that you require of them. Mark, this time in, in, in Qatar, uh, um, teams are allowed to take 30 players. Um, but for the match day, they have to have 23 players, as usual. Um, how important is it, as Sina was saying, that we have a plan for each position, but also the players that do come in are still able to perform at a good level because ultimately we know for a fact that USA, England, Scotland, Wales, Ukraine are all going to come prepared. No doubt about it. So how important is it for Iran to be as prepared as the rest 
So that was the key point Sina said, and we did that uh, job in the 2018. Even 2014, maybe a little bit less level, but 2018 was exactly uh, like Sina said, each position we had two players, which they know their responsibility in the game, you know, in defensive, in offensive, everything. So maybe about the quality, as uh, Sina said, a little bit uh, different, but they did good job, you know. So this is the very important, but how can I say this? I don't want to criticize, you know, about the uh, talk about the other coaches, but uh, I didn't see this last two years, you know, about this. When you when we lose uh, one player, we had big problem, you know, about COVID, about injury. So this is the only way we have time, but we need the uh, knowledge to do that, you know, and Kairos did well this job. So, yeah. yeah. This is this is the you need the big knowledge like Carlos Queiroz, you know. Yeah, it's a big challenge for Scotch. Experience, yeah, experience is experience, everything. So, for so sure. we uh, we did with Queiroz this job. So, but we must to do that, you know. We don't have another choice. I want to ask you about Scotch, Marco. I think it's important to bring. Obviously, you were assistant to Carlos Queiroz. Uh, today, the assistants to uh, Skocic are Vahid Hashimian and Karim Bagheri and Mario Todd. Um, how do you think over the whole qualification, you know, from what you have seen as a, as a former national team, as a coach, how do you rate their performance? I know it's tough for you to rate it. Of course, it's not hard for you to say this, but how can you rate their performance? So I can say this another way. As you know, and this is the history, you cannot change. I had another interview a couple of days ago, and I said this. Uh, look, after 2014, we start to uh, change the generation, bring young players in 2015 in Asia, Australia. Uh, as you know, we bring Sardar, we bring uh, Morteza, Burali Ganji, Amiri. Kafuri, Ramin Rezaian, and many players, you know, for the first time that tournament. So after that start, a little step by step to change the generation. So these players, you know, 80% from the Kairos, you know, time. Yeah, definitely. So I just can say we have very good quality players, which most of players, they're playing in Europe. And they have that experience last World Cup because last World Cup 2018 only we had three players. Uh, they had experience from World Cup. Other players, the first time they play that World Cup environment, you know, that pressure from World Cup. So now they have that experience play against Spain, against Morocco, against Portugal. After that, now they, they are playing in Europe. For example, Taremi, Jambach, Sardar. Oliza, they, they are scoring against Chelsea, Juventus, you know. So uh, they are they are now they are very confident players. So uh, I think uh, I don't want to put pressure for the for players or for the coaches for the team. But with this generation now, they are ready to qualify for the first time for the second round, you know. And with this group compared with other groups. I just can't say that. I don't want to say more than this, you know, just to, of course. Uh, because I don't want to, this is not professional. If I I talk about the coaches, other coaches, this is not professional. Of course, of course. Uh, but, but one thing I can say. Yes. They did They did good job. Result was great, you know, that's yeah. it. This Absolutely. is the norm. Yeah. Uh, Sina. Um, for the for the likes of Skocic coming in, uh, you know he he has had criticism recently with the loss against South Korea. A lot of criticism. Uh, a lot of people saying 
you know, we should bring in a new coach, you know, we should do this, we should do that, we should uh, get someone different. Uh, why, why now, you know, especially with the whole qualification happening, with us going into the, uh, you know, the World Cup quite comfortably, why, why, why does all this happen now? Firstly, I agree with Mark or said towards the end, and and in in the fact that they they did a good job in in qualifying the team for the World Cup because when you look at where Iran was at the time under Wilmots, and again, Wilmots, everyone, <laughs> if 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 you've been listening to the podcast for for as as long as let's say three or four years ago, you know how I feel about Wilmots, um, but picking up from where Wilmots left off, they did the basics right. They picked the team up. They stuck uh, the players where they belonged in terms of the, the, their specialist positions, and and we breezed through the qualification. And our quality um, is really kind of reflective in the results. You know, we it wasn't fluke results. That really is our quality in Asia. We are one of, if not the best team in Asia uh, at the moment. Going into the World Cup, though, Skocic, look. There was a picture um, yesterday after the World Cup draw where all the managers were stood alongside each other. And you look at the names there and Skocic would have felt like, look, I'm, I'm probably not on the same level as majority of the managers there. So this is, so he, uh, look, I'm, I'm, I'm confident in saying he's a little bit out of his depth going into this tournament. And uh, again, it doesn't take away from the job that he has done. He's done a great job. Um, but like I said, ideally, you would want to go into the World Cup with a manager that has more experience, that has more knowledge, that can bring something to the table that that majority of our players who already play in Europe don't have. Unfortunately, he, he isn't. You know, when you look at his resume, you look at that, he, he doesn't. But at the same time, I don't necessarily agree that, you know, six months to the World Cup, we need to change the manager. Okay, we bring in a new manager. What is the new manager going to do within six months? You know, if, if we're only going to have two friendly games, technically a new manager is never going to have the right the, the opportunity to implement all his correct ideas. We are in the position that we are. Dragan Eskushish is our manager, and he's let's be honest, he's 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 as I said, he's done a he's done a good job. He's he's took the team to the World Cup, and I think. He's going to have to uh, be with us until at least the end of the World Cup, um, and and see see what happens there. I, I I sent a few tweets yesterday. In one of them, I said this is a golden opportunity for the Iranian national team in terms of the draw. This is a draw which allows us to look at the games and say realistically we could qualify for the second round. When you look at the quality in the team that we have, when you look at our players and you look at the opposition, we can say, yes, you know, it's, it's possible. And it is possible when you compare it to 2018, when we play against the African champions in Morocco, we played against Portugal and Spain, which again, I don't need to give them any introduction. And we went into that final game and until the very last second, we had a chance of going to the second round. So if that is possible, this is certainly possible. Yes, I think our chances would have been better with a better manager, but even with Skocic, I have belief. I'm, I'm yeah. going to support him, and 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 I, I know I've I've given the long answer to you, Ari, and I apologise. No, of but, course. But 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 um, my sense is it's too late to change the manager now. Uh, Marco, what is the objective for the national team in this World Cup? You know, everyone keeps saying about qualify for a second round, but let's be more realistic. In your mind, what is the the real objective to the, for this national team today? Those quality players with this group, so we have big chance to qualify for next round. This is the, I think, my opinion. The key point is the players play Europe, confident, good experience from last World Cup, and the group we stay there. So, I think we have big chance to qualify the second round. Um, Sina, what about you? What, what's your objective first, and then your pr- prediction second? I think the objective should be to win 
at least one game. Um, and I think that's that's basically advancement, if you want to put it that way. That's progression. You know, we we got a draw in 2014. We got a win and a draw in 2018 uh, in that really difficult group. So for 2022, as Markar said, with the quality of the players that we have, we should at least get a win from one of the games. Whether it's USA or the winner of the playoffs, it doesn't make a difference. I think that should be the very least of our expectation, of, 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 of objective, as you said, something to aim for. What will happen, and you know I'm not very optimistic when it comes to these things. <laughs> I'm, I'm always <laughs> negative. Um, I am very fearful and I'm, I'm, I'm afraid that we are that history is going to repeat itself and we are going to lose the England game. We go into the second game trying our hardest, give it 150% and end up losing the game. And then we, end, we go into the third game with our best players already exhausted. We play our second team almost and we end up with a draw against USA. And that's that's me being extremely yeah. negative. That's that's a scenario that I, I'm I'm praying that it doesn't happen. I think it's important to to say this. I think although you know we're looking at it from your like you said the perspective, you know England, most likely we're not gonna most likely we're not gonna beat England. Okay, that that's the the reality of. I mean they're such a strong team. Iran can't go into the, into that match thinking they're gonna go out there and just beat England. The the most that they can try to do is try to get a result. If they can get a draw against England, like in my opinion, that's fantastic. But even a defeat against England is not the worst thing in the world. Ultimately, we can go into the game, as you said, against USA, uh, you know, and try to at least get something out of it. But as you said, uh, the order of it makes it so hard because if you go against England and you're putting, you know, all your effort into getting a a draw and you don't get it then you're putting yourself in a really tough situation physically. So having said that, I, I think that ultimately... Oh, actually, one point I want to make on the US national team, I think it's quite important to, to say this uh, on, the, on the podcast. If you go back and look at the US national team's last 20 matches, and you look at the lineup, you know, the 11 players that they started in the last 20 matches, most of those games, they have played virtually different t- uh, lineups uh, through almost all those matches you know they don't they don't keep a consistent lineup for most of these games iran tend to have the same players here and there starting uh, i want to ask sina this question do you think that having that kind of lack of con- consistency chemistry in the in the us team would it be okay for iran to cede possession to them for good portions of the match because you might feel that the US team can't keep possession as well as they as well as they probably could because of the lack of chemistry. I think that is certainly one way of approaching the game. Um, I think you're right um, in in that sense that lack of consistency is ultimately to our benefit. Uh, but whether we have or don't have possession. Um, we are. We, it would be silly of us to underestimate them as a team because you're right. You know, even if we concede possession to them, or if we try to concede, if we try to hold possession, you look at, for example, some of the midfielders that they have in 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 Tyler Adams. You have Christian Pulisic, uh, Giovanni Reina. You know, these are players that can create um, something out of nothing, and and that's what we need to be wary of in the sense that. Even if we are the one holding possession or they are the one holding possession, we need to be wary of, of these players and making sure that these important players are nullified. I don't think that Eskocic and the um, the coaching staff will approach the games in a conservative manner, which um, we did in 2018 and 2014. I think Iran will be more attacking. And I think that can be a, you know, a point of concern somewhat, because when we come up against better opposition, those holes in our defence and in our midfield will be picked apart by the players that I just, I just named. Yeah. So I think regardless of whether we play 
defensive or whether we, we try to keep possession, we need to make sure that at all times our defense is protected by our midfielders. You know, if we're going to play with Ezzatullahi as number six, for example, or, or we're going to play, well, how are we going to play with the fullbacks? Are they going to be attacking? Are they going to be a little more conservative? I'm, I'm a bit more wary of, of the counterattacks, which we concede. And we've done it yeah. against South Korea in both games. And I'm, I'm worried about them in the World Cup as well. Marco, I, I want to. Uh, we got a question from from Twitter at uh, from at Juventus One. He asks, uh, who should play next to uh, Ezatollah in midfield? It depends on which uh, system we 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 wanted to play. We want to play four three three or four two three one. I don't know yeah. which uh, system we want to play. If we play four three three, so of course Said should play number six position. Then number eight and uh, maybe Nurullah you can play there. But for four, two, three, one, I think uh, in this moment Nurullah is the best option. We'd say. Uh, I, I want to make um, the, the the last question for you, uh, Marco, before we finish the episode is regarding uh, Ararat. We spoke about it in the in the interview that we did with you uh, a couple of years ago. Uh, what what progress has been made on Ararat Tehran uh, in the last couple of years? So Ararat, as you know, is uh, the private club, you know, and uh, after the Iran League goes to professional league, so they can't compete with this league. So and many players they uh, they went abroad and. Completely empathy from the young players in Ararat. But before uh, this COVID started in 2008-19, they made a new team in the Tehran League, which uh, the most players, they are under 19. So they start to make a new team. But when after COVID stopped uh, all games, so now, unfortunately, they don't have any football teams. They have just basketball for women and for men teams. They don't have football teams. And uh, they are very bad situation about the finance. Uh, they don't support uh, like uh, police Estelar. The minister, sport minister should be support like Estelar police. They need to support uh, because it's very difficult to uh, make another new team. Yeah. Um, Sina, have you got any last questions you want to ask? Um, to be honest, <laughs> there are plenty of questions, um, but um, I know it's it's late in Tehran as well. I I, I don't want to keep Markar here um, for yeah. long. His insight is is always as always brilliant, um, and I hope the listeners have enjoyed it because you know this is someone who's been present pre, present in, in two World Cup campaigns, familiar with this generation of players. And uh, again, this is a, as close you will get to in terms of how the team will approach it and, and, and what they would think about the draw as uh, as you can get. Uh, thanks again, uh, Marco, for your time. I really appreciate it. You've uh, really came. Uh, you're obviously, it's late in, in Tehran right now, but you've, uh, you've came and you've given us fantastic insight. And again, we really appreciate your time. Uh, nice to talk with you guys and I want uh, to say again the end of the, this interview as I said uh, World Cup we don't have any single easy game but uh, we have Iran had chance to qualify for the second round with this group and with this quality of players so I hope this gonna happen and uh, Iran people they gonna be happy so thank you very much with this time and uh, I hope to see you in Qatar. <laughs> thank you very much. Hope to see you as well. Um, I want to make a quick point. Our next episode will be out uh, f- uh, the following week from this one where we'll be speaking to various experts and journalists from the USA, UK, uh, Scotland, Wales and Ukraine. Uh, we'll hear about the opponents, uh, what their perspective on Iran is. So make sure you stay tuned on our on our social media and podcast platforms. Subscribe to us on YouTube, SoundCloud, Spotify. Um, 
uh, iTunes, Castbox, etc. Follow us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, again, I appreciate seeing us time as well, and uh, we'll see you all very, very soon. Take care. Hi, this is Kat, and you're listening to Golbezan, and I hope you continue listening to their amazing podcast. Thank you all for the support. Love you, Golbezan.